hello and welcome to another video this time going through step one 2008 question two um, yeah these are great questions to practice if you're coming up to the mat and you've done all the long questions on the past papers go to the oldish step ones like this and try some of those particularly ones which look like they don't use any uh, second year A level mathematics um, you can normally recognize them uh, like um, but uh, yeah you know you, you should be able to recognize which ones they are I tell you what, you might not be aware of this site as well, the Step Database. Have you ever seen this website, Step Database? Um, this has all of the questions from every step paper, and you can kind of look at it by topic. So, you know, functions is something which comes up a lot in the map. Well, you know, let's try uh, an S1 question on functions, a Step 1 question on functions, see what that's like. That looks much more like what you might find on a map paper. Um, do you know what I mean? I'm trying to think of other topics which regularly come up. They're like geometry and trigonometry. Um, but remember it's going to be kind of AS once again because they don't really test that. What else do they like in the map? They like functions, they like that. I'm trying to think. Certainly there could be some calculus involved and probably will be. Um, but a lot of it will be, you know, this kind of stuff, you know, maybe. And you could use some of the step twos as well. There's no harm in that. Um, but I'm just pointing out it's a good website. Okay, so anyway, uh, this was a request from uh, Ash. Brilliant. I love these requests. I really do. Uh, very happy to have a go at it. I think what you've missed in this question... Um, I don't know if I've got this right as well. Tell me if you think I've got this wrong, but um, I think what you've missed is, well, if you look at this little line here, it kind of sort of explains a bit more about what this question is about. You know, why are they saying B squared is less than C here? And maybe you saw this straight away. It's to make sure that this quadratic doesn't ever turn negative, yeah? Because when does a positive X squared turn negative? It turns negative if it's got roots, yeah, or oh, well, if, it, if it's got one root, it doesn't turn negative, it gets to zero. But if it's got two real roots, it'll be negative at some point, and this won't always hold. So the reason why they've set this as true is because if we wanted to make sure it has no roots, because we need that, then the square root is square rootable. <laughs> make sure it's got two real, it's got no real roots. <laughs> I.e., B, well, our B, which is 2B squared, minus 4 times 1 times c that's got to be less than 0 hasn't it and that gives you 4b squared minus 4c is less than 0 and that's why b squared is less than c in this question they're making sure that you're not a square root of the negative anyway bear that in mind for later um, and it's always useful to look at those things and ask yourself why have you done that yeah because um, it's possible to do this whole question and not actually and kind of ignore that but best not okay so when I saw this and realized I've got to differentiate um, I didn't want to make the differentiation too difficult for myself so this is what I personally did I took the x over there and squared both sides and then I differentiated both sides with respect to x in other words I did implicit differentiation now that's fine on this side where you get 2x plus 2b here I'm just going to use a bit of chain rule and you can definitely use chain rule and implicit differentiation in one go I'm going to differentiate inside the brackets, so I get dt by dx minus 1. And then I'm going to differentiate stuff squared, and that differentiates to 2 times the stuff. That's how I do kind of quick chain rule in my head. I hope you don't mind me using such uh, casual language as differentiate stuff squared. It differentiates to 2 times stuff. We're differentiating stuff squared with respect to stuff, I guess you could say. <laughs> Okay, so now I, then I just rearrange this into the answer. I mean, it's definitely, I'm sure, possible to do this in a much more kind of longer way. Um, and I reckon if I look at my old solution to this, I can't because it's at work at the moment, but I bet you I did it in a really kind of cumbersome and crude way. But now I prefer slightly faster approaches. Okay, that gives me x plus b over t minus x. And then I just added the 1 over. So dt by dx is going to be x plus b over t minus x plus t minus x over t minus x and therefore you get t plus b on the top and t minus x on the bottom and then I flipped it because I think they found dx by dt <laughs> yeah um, and it flips to the answer so dx by dt is t minus x over t and b just check it we're good yeah okay <laughs> I did that, and I was all kind of like, uh, you know, feeling pretty, uh, you know, pretty clever myself because that answer popped out straight away nicely. And then I got to this bit, and I was like, uh, um, uh, <laughs> you know, because, you know, I tried plugging t back in here, and I was like, okay, x plus the root minus x. Well, that gives me a root on the top. Um, and then I started realizing, hang on, I want the dt by dx anyway, because maybe this is this, 
and integrates back to this. Basically, I spent a good seven or eight wasted minutes, and I think that's one of the things I like pointing out in these videos. Like, do not assume that this video is like a real time, you know, uh, solving of my problem necessarily. Sometimes I do them uh, in real time, but uh, most of the time you're missing the six or seven minutes at various stages where I've gone, ah, uh, uh, you know, like uh, that is that's normal. It really is. I think it's normal. It's normal for me. Uh, I'm sure there are, uh, you know, much uh, much cleverer people than I who don't do this, have have this kind of moment where they're not quite sure what to do. But um, yeah, I, I do have those moments. Anyway, in the end, I looked at this. I thought, oh, you know, there must be a, a like a, it must be a hint here. And I thought maybe it's a substitution, and that's where it ended up uh, solving it for me. I suddenly realised it's very easy to rearrange this. Yeah, if you're integrating one over root x squared plus 2bx plus c. Oh, I've missed out the 2. I kept doing that in my working as well. It's poor. Okay, if you're integrating that, I suddenly thought, well, it's relatively easy to turn that into t minus x reciprocated. Yeah, um, so 1 over t minus x in other words. And then I've already done the differentiation by substitution. So let t equal x plus root x squared plus 2bx plus c, and this is definitely not the only way to do it, I bet there's loads of equivalent methods, then dt by dx, well, we'll just write dx by dt because we already know, dx by dt is t minus x over t plus b, and so what have we got here, if we make the substitution, well this is the same of t take away x and then reciprocate, so that's 1 over t minus x, multiplied by, now I need to swap the dx for all of this times dt. So that's going to give me t minus x over t plus b times dt. Let me know in the comments if you had another way of doing it, and please let me know if it was a simpler way of doing it as well. But that's what I did. Um, okay, 1 over t plus b with respect to t. And so that's just a ln problem, isn't it? If we're, t is a variable here because b is a constant. So you get ln of t plus b plus a constant k. Don't forget to switch it back out for x's because we were asked to integrate a function of x. What's t again? I think t was something to do with x plus plus that square root thing. Plus a b. Plus a constant k. Okay, there we go. Now um, that is what that integrates to, I believe. Yeah. Now, verify by direct integration that your result holds also in the case where b squared equals c if x plus b is greater than zero, but that your result does not hold in the case b squared equals c if x plus b is less than zero. Yeah? Interesting. Very interesting. So, okay. I'm going to call this part three. I, they never used to label them properly, especially in the old papers. It's like, well, you know, with a bit of labelling, you can hopefully you make it easier for the markers, surely. Uh, okay, so anyway, part three. Um, okay, so they're setting b squared equal to c now. Yeah, in other words, they're making this zero, aren't they? Like, um, you know, they're, 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 sorry, they're not making it zero. They're giving it a, a repeated root. That's what they're doing. They're giving the quadratic a repeated root. So it now can actually equal, um, a zi you know, it can actually equal zero, which means you'd be squaring zero, which seems reasonable enough. It's when you're squaring negatives that you can't do it. So I just went ahead and set it equal to this, because it said by direct integration, I thought it wants me to integrate it again. Um, so x squared plus uh, 2bx, and I'm going to swap c for b squared. Now, if you have done the, the um, bit in the further maths textbook where they start getting you to integrate things like this, you'll know that you always complete the square. <laughs> But you don't need to, you know, know that really to realise that this is a good idea because look what you get. You get x plus b squared square rooted. Yeah. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I want to square root that square. Yeah. I totally get it. I definitely would have done it years ago. I did it actually when I when I did this uh, problem. But I was acutely aware of this little known fact. I'd love to make a, like a little course actually one day of little known facts which aren't understood. Uh, necessarily by even the very best students at A level. Root of x squared is another name for mod x, yeah? And that's because root of x squared is not equal to x. 
Yeah, you might think it's equal to x, but it's not, is it? Because what about when x is minus 2? Square it, you get 4. Take the positive root of that, you get 2, yeah? Square root does not necessarily have... If we just write square root of 64, that does not mean 8 or minus 8. That just means 8. That means the positive root, yeah? And so square root of x squared is actually mod x. It's another way of writing mod x. And, you know, try it on Geo GeoGebra or Desmos. I'm going to try it right now, actually. I don't know. I hope I'm right here. I'm pretty sure I am. That if you type in y equals the square root... Well, I'll put x squared... And then try this. Yeah, sure enough, if I type in y equals x squared all to the power of 0.5, it draws me the modulus graph, yeah? And that's because it is a mod of x. So you do have to be slightly careful here. You really do have to be slightly careful here. Okay, so this is the bit I haven't worked through yet, but this is this is the reason why it doesn't hold. And also, by the way, um, I looked at this and I understood what they were saying straight away here, just because if b squared equals c, it's possible for this to equal 0, yeah? And so if x plus b is negative, then you're going to be learning a negative number. And that's what makes no sense, yeah? If you see what I mean, that's the real problem here. We're going to be learning a negative number if x plus b is less than 0. Because this, this basically is the same as like this, really. You end up with learn. Um, uh, but yeah, you, you're just basically dealing with a different case. Okay, so... We're basically integrating now 1 over the mod of x plus b. Yeah, that's what we've really got here. Now, all that happens then is basically, let's draw a diagram. Like, yeah, let's try this. Okay, right. Now, if I was just going to draw y, draw y equals 1 over x plus b, yeah, what's that look like? Well, it'll have an asymptote at x equals minus b, because you always get them when you've got division by 0. Uh, it'll come down like that, where it will cross there at 1 over b, I think. And then it would go down like that, and that's normal y equals 1 over x plus b. Well, when you do the mod of that, it just goes on up here, yeah? And I do understand what you were talking about here, Ash, saying, oh, you know, surely it works for when it's less than b as well as greater than b, because you're saying this has an area, yeah? And it does, you're right, it does have an area, it really does. Um, I think it's handy in these kind of situations to say, let's assume x is greater than b, yeah, uh, oh sorry, yeah, which is the same as saying x, ooh, no, 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 let's, be, let's be careful, let's be careful, if x is greater than b, yeah, let's assume, sorry, x is greater than minus b, because that's equivalent to x plus b is greater than 0, so let's change it, assume x is greater than minus b, so I'm just going to take the case where the limits, yeah, if you like, if you're working out a proper area, yeah, and it didn't ask us to actually do it with any limits, did it? Uh, we just um, ver yeah, we verify by direct integration. Good. We're looking at this. I'm going to draw a diagram basically and make my argument here. I hope it makes sense. Like I said, I, don't, I haven't actually looked at the mark scheme or anything here. These are just my thoughts for you. Hopefully, it sort of illuminates things a little bit more. I hope. I hope they're right. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I'm if uh, this is the case, yeah, um, and and it will verify that this result holds, yeah, because we're going to verify di by direct integration that our previous result holds, yeah. Okay, assume x is greater than minus b, then we're simply integrating 1 over x plus b, yeah, dx. Okay, well that is the sa same as ln of x plus b plus a constant c, yeah, and that looks absolutely fine since x plus b is greater than 0, we are fine yeah but on the other hand which I think they normally abbreviate to OTOH in step <laughs> yeah. uh, they do that in the mark schemes anyway sometimes so on the other hand if x is less than minus b and if x equals minus b by the way you've got ln of 0 so that's no good and also x can't equal minus b because the curve's not defined for when x is minus b okay if x is less than minus b then what are we really integrating? We're really integrating minus 1 over x plus b, yeah? That's just to make sure I flipped that, you know, which was down here in the x-axis to put it up there. I've changed the y coordinates from negative to positive. Okay, with respect to x, yeah? Now this is going to give us ln, minus ln, sorry, of x plus b, yeah? But remember that x plus, or plus a constant c, 
but x plus b is less than zero and hence this has no meaning because you're going to end up with a negative value which are learning yeah that's the problem now i suppose you could argue oh hang on what about lens these should always be modulus after the integral is that what they're getting at in this question yeah maybe maybe that's what they're getting at in which case it's fine i think the area does exist um uh, the, the modulus with the learn just occurred to me by the way literally as i'm doing this video like oh yes that actually is a problem let's just have a little look but that the result does not hold i guess we're actually testing though what result are we testing uh yeah we're, we're verifying by direct integration that this previous result holds when this is true but this previous result does not hold when that's true yeah so I should be looking at this result sorry I think you're right that you can work out the area to the left when x is minus b by doing minus ln of x plus b because you carefully handled it but if you look at our result here yeah if b squared equals uh, c but what was it b squared equals c I think it was yeah b squared equals c then what do we have here we've got ln of x plus root of uh, right if you've got that you've actually got here um, 2bx plus uh, b squared and so that's the same as x plus b squared again isn't it square rooted and then plus b okay plus the constant k that's the same as ln of mod of x plus b but then we've got this x plus b loose not in the mod yeah and this is our problem yeah because as x plus b is less than zero you're just going to end up doing ln of zero there because like uh, you'll have a uh, basically like let's say x plus b is minus five then the mod of x plus b will be five and you'll end up with ln of zero so i think it's because you're verifying this result yeah not this result i'll tell you how i'd normally check my answers here as well ash because i don't know if you're aware of this website and they're really useful websites um there's an old somebody wrote uh, answers to these on mei let's quickly check it mei step solutions careful when you type mei this was um it's an exam board but it seems to always bring up mein Kampf as if you're some kind of a you know um admirer of hitler uh, <laughs> but anyway right where were we MA, mei step solutions work step solutions it will be might just be on this front page you have to scroll down a bit they've hidden it it's like a needle in a haystack this but well worth being aware of no resource selected okay <laughs> okay i might have to try the evil google mei uh, step solutions okay yeah right now Amongst the 15,000 things, look for a popular one. It's always popular um, because lots of people use it. Um, somebody basically wrote down loads of step solutions. And I really like the person who did them, actually. If I've just gone past them, look, there they are. Okay, right. You've got lots of the old solutions here. They're work solutions. Just access a, a guest. Let's see what, um, let's see if we're right. Yeah, I think it's because we're testing the result that we proved, you know, um, we're testing that result by direct integration because I think you're right that you do have an area there. Um, it will be in here, I guess, 2008. Question two, magic. Okay, right. Let's see what uh, this person's done. See, they've differentiated in a different way. Um, uh, I quite like my way, to be honest, but there we go. It's not too difficult. Um, okay, yep, yeah, so we got that right. That's good, plus a constant. Uh, okay, let's set it to that. Okay, yeah, look, look, they've been careful, they've been careful, they've said it equals like that, just like I said, because um, it's a modulus, basically. Uh, now, they've had to be careful. Oh, and they've split their LUNs. They've split their LUNs. Now, why would they do that? Um, let me just check I understand this. How the two cases uh, correspond to the above result? Yeah, they're comparing it to this result. Give this. Yeah, I think he's essentially arguing exactly the same, or she's essentially arguing exactly the same as me. Um, I'll check this, so I'll have a bit more of a careful look. But my thinking is, basically, it's it's not that you can't find the area to the left of that because it's perfectly symmetrical. That you know that graph, and yeah, you can definitely find the area, and if you integrate it carefully, you can do that. But with your initial 
you know your result from integrating this holds if that's true but it definitely hold if this it definitely doesn't hold if this is true because you end up with null of zero when x plus b is less than zero and that doesn't make any sense um, but yeah i hope that was useful i hope uh, that website i showed you or some of those they might be useful to you if you haven't seen them before but yeah best of luck with uh, with the map bye bye